And Dr. Tim, people sometimes refer to it lean as mean, and it, it, it's basically, yeah. it equals, you know, 100 job losses. or how, how would you comment? I mean, a lot of people are worried yeah. that lean has, has and, this negative connotation. Right. And one of the very first things that I do is I try to impress upon them that lean is not about creating redundancies. Lean is not about having in, uh, right up front savings by laying off people, by having redundancies. So what I do then is I show them how they're going to be saving the time, the footsteps in the sand, saving the medical errors, saving the mistakes that they make, and that this will generate organizational savings for them so they don't have to lay off people. You know, I think just to, to add to that as well, Joe, for me, it's, it's a real motivator for an employee to learn about a new way of looking at their, at their day job. And I think, you know, as part of any lean deployment, every individual picks that up, that motivation to change and improve. But, but yeah. can, can, sorry, Dr. Tim, can, can lean equate to cost cutting? I'll give you the example of what Toyota does. Toyota does not embrace lean because it cut costs. Sure, they cut production costs, they can lower the sale price to individuals, but by lowering the production cost through continuous improvement, they're making the product flow through better, they're reducing waste, and this leads to more profit. But they don't do lean in order just to make more profit. They do lean in order to reduce flow, or sorry, increase flow, and then reduce waste. And as you were saying, once people see that these things take place and they see that they can become the change that they want to see, this is really empowering for people. This will really motivate people. As John Shook said when he took the, the new Fremont, California plant from a GM to a Toyota, he said they went from zero suggestions per person per month to one to 12 suggestions per person per month. They were saving over $100 million a year. And how did they do that? They showed people that they could become the change that they wanted to see, and they gave them just a little bit of root cause problem solving. And then they did. And they saw that they could become the change they wanted to see, and this was exceptionally motivating. So as I say, it's got to come from the top down mm -hmm. and the bottom up, but once the bottom gets it, and it's sustained, that's, a tr that's the responsibility of top management, and it's sustained, then it will spread, and then the whole project will be sustained.